the, the topic was, was brought about by, by a, a, a narrative, really, that came from Klaus Schwab, where he coined this whole phrase of the fourth industrial revolution. It's been about four years since we all started to really understand, uh, A, the dynamic, and B, understand what the implications are in society, what those implications are for business, and, and frankly, for all the, the people on the planet in terms of how we are adjusting to this new economy. What Klaus did was he called upon us to, to remind ourselves that you know, all these new technologies that we're embracing, that we're facing, first and for foremost are tools, and they're tools made by people. Uh, we know this fourth industrial revolution has uh, staggering promise, and frankly, for the first time in history, opportunity and wealth can be created through the power of one's creative mind and leveraging vast amounts of computing power. Thank you, Andy, for that. Uh, to turn great ideas into products and services and make our lives better. Intell intellectual capital has become the new currency of business and finance, and the promise of utilizing brain power to move individuals, families, and entire communities from poverty to prosperity within one generation has never been more possible than it is today. And yet, there's this pervasive sense that technology is driving people rather than people driving technology. And if one thing has changed over the last four years, it's the speed at which change is happening. It's exponential, and it's accelerating. In fact, a few facts to consider. More data has been generated in the last four years than in the previous combined history of man. Over since 2020, smart sensors, or by 2020, smart sensors and Internet of Things devices will generate over 500 zettabytes of data. And the investment in artificial intelligence is accelerating the pace at hundreds of percents per year and potentially will increase over $50 billion of annual spend. Facts like these, frankly, strain the brain's processing capacity and they can become desensitizing. And if we're not vigilant, disempowering. But as ubiquitous as technology is in our da daily lives, let's not forget that we're still in the early chapters of this data economy. And so they're bound to be missteps and course corrections. The way I like to think about it, any new technology, there's a point of euphoria and excitement. And then there's a point of worry and then we have to figure out how to make rules. And I think we are somewhere in that narrative and somewhere in that time frame, and we have to figure out as an industry, as a society, how we're going to embrace and balance this, these enormous societal and economic benefits with the need for privacy and protection. And it's not gonna be easy, but we have to take this challenge on head on. Tim Cook wrote a wonderful article in Time Magazine is basically saying this challenge of data privacy is solvable. It isn't too big, too challenging, and most importantly, too late. And so part of what we have to do is embrace this in a way so that we can have a common destiny that is empowering and people-powered and people-centric in this evolution. It's not too late to harness data as a catalyst for innovation and empowerment while ensuring that privacy and personal agency isn't sacrificed in the process. And like I said, this won't be easy. But I feel confident, especially with these folks sitting to my left, that we'll be able to handle a lot of these challenges together as business people, as academics, and frankly, as policymakers. 